Hey everyone, the name is Eric Dorn. Today we're talking about changing your personality. And changing your personality, that's something as that is very popular. Yes, a lot of people dream about becoming something they're not. There is a self-help library section talking about how to change yourself, how to become more extroverted, how to become more straightforward, how to become a better person, how to become more beautiful and more popular and more successful. Often, become more judging, become more proactive, become more structured all of those things exist and all of them are messages that we receive all the time messages that tell us we're not good enough and some people are obsessed with change and with changing themselves to be something they're not and I want to talk about in particular why change is not possible yeah change is not possible let me show you why imagine a good book Imagine a good TV show, something you've been following on Netflix for maybe five to ten seasons. Imagine a character you've been following for a long time. Now imagine this. A good character does not change. Yeah, that's true. I think about it. And think about the characters you've been following in your life. Good characters do not change. Good characters do not make a 180. They do not suddenly change their core motivations or who they are. No. Who they are, the core essence of a person, tends to remain the same throughout their entire life. The same goes for a fictional character. The sh character, a good fictional character, does not change. And there is a reason for this. Because we have inside us an authentic, natural personality. A natural set of core motivations, needs and traumas and experiences that have come to define us. That are so fundamental that we couldn't change them without cutting out that entire area in the brain and throwing it away. And these character traits do not simply change. No, what tends to happen is a character grows. And character growth is different from character change. Because in character growth, what's happening is you're discovering how this character will act in different situations. You're discovering how this scumbag villain suddenly manages the thought of being in love. Or if suddenly finding out they have a kid. You're finding out how a character that uh, struggled with loneliness and isolation suddenly deals with the thought of finding and making friends. How these experiences come to affect a person. And a good character remains consistent. These core motivations and struggles exist throughout the show. They remain with these struggles, but we see these struggles from new perspectives. And that is building a character. Building a character by... Talk, talking about their family issues, talking about their uh, deals with heartbreak, talking about their struggles, finding out who this core authentic person, this core makeup of traumas and issues and needs and personality traits and hobbies and passions all come together to build an exciting plot and story. And thinking back to your personal life, to who you are, what has happened is not that you've changed. It's not that you've gone from being an introvert to an extrovert. It's not that you've gone from being a perceiver to a judger. It's not that you've suddenly become something you're not. Your core motivation, your core needs and struggles remain the same, but you've found a way to build around it. You've found a way to adapt your life and who you are and what you do. And you are still coming at this from the perspective of who you are and what is true about yourself. And it's all about finding out that true nature, finding out the true you, finding out who you really are, behind all the personas and masks and all the things you tell yourself. And uh, that's generally what's happening. When a person says to me, yeah, I've gone from being an INFP to an ENFP, no, what's usually happened is they've discovered how extroverted they really are. They found out that, yeah, my core drive was actually extroversion all along, but I hid it due to my experiences in life. I wasn't able to be as extroverted as I wanted to. Perhaps I was an extrovert dealing with social anxiety, and perhaps I dealt with being bullied growing up, and that made me feel isolated and cut off from others. And all of that is character growth, not character change. It is growth because often these people are still a little anxious socially. Still, they're struggling with feelings of fear of isolation, fear of being alone. And all of this keeps on just coming along. Like, we stay the same. Our, ten years from now, you will still be you. 
10 years ago, I was still me. Yeah, I was still me. I was still who I am today. And that's the thing. I look at myself and I'm surprised by how little I've changed and how true I how how I'm still the same person I was then. I was still <laughs> 10 years ago, 15 year old me, okay, 12 years ago, 13 year old me was going around handing people leaflets about astrology and making people star sign maps. I was telling people about their personality and who they were. I was um, not video filming myself, I didn't know that medium yet, but I was writing down stories and characters and I was developing ideas and I was philosophizing. I was a performer, I was often out there, I was often interacting with people, I was a person who singed publicly and who uh, met and uh, made friends easily, I was a person that was often engaging and uh, I was also a person that spent a lot of time reading books, I was also a person that lived in my own world in the twilight zone, a person that uh, spent weeks alone and then went out and did something fun and hang out, hung out with people. I had that lifestyle and I still have that lifestyle. I'm still living in Twilight Zone. I'm still exploring theories and philosophy. I'm still very outgoing and easy to talk to. I'm still a person that's um, somewhat isolated at times, somewhat alone at times and somewhat inhibited at times. And I've always yeah, been a little insecure, it's true, I've been insecure a lot of the time in my life. I felt like I was not good enough and that I wasn't living up to everyone's expectations and that I always felt I need to push myself and I still do and I did 10 years ago and I probably will 10 years from now. And I'm realizing and I'm making peace with that. And I think a lot of people need to do just that, make peace with their depression, their struggle, with their issues, realize, yeah, to some extent this will still be there in 10 years from now. So how can I learn to live with it? How can I learn to make peace with it? How can I learn to move forward from it? So as I'm thinking about this, I'm realizing a lot of people can't tell the difference between reality and persona. They can't tell the difference between mask and personality. Think about PewDiePie. PewDiePie 2012, completely fake always trying to put on a show, always trying to be so funny, but not succeeding. Yeah, a lot of people loved his persona, a lot of people were attracted to it, a lot of people thought it was amazing, a lot of people love Kanye West, and they're going, wow, he's so good, and they're not realizing that show that he's putting on, they're not realizing how much he's surrounded by fakeness in a lot of what he does. Yes, Kanye West has been an amazing producer, an amazing musician, a lot of his content is really good, but PewDiePie and Kanye West are such good examples of a person that has gotten so caught up with their persona. And uh, PewDiePie is really the positive example of growth. PewDiePie is the example of the person that took all that fake energy, all that enthusiasm, and scaled it down. PewDiePie is the best example of someone that realized that he was trying to be something he was not. And PewDiePie became so much more modest, so much more relaxed, so much more at peace and so much easier to listen to as his change emerged. And he has only become more popular thanks to his growth, thanks to realizing who he was, thanks to becoming more accepting of himself. Where Kanye West has become more unpopular with every album, with the more he tried, the more he put so much energy into being this intense dramatic personality that would sell a lot of albums and create a lot of controversy. And I'm sorry if you like Kanye West, but yeah, it's not real. Still, people get so attached to your persona, to your mask, and with PewDiePie, I don't think PewDiePie even anticipated how much negativity he would attract with his change. Yeah, people hated the new PewDiePie. People hated the new PewDiePie. They say, I hate PewDiePie. And that's probably gonna happen to Kanye West too. When Kanye West has his spiritual awakening, when Kanye West realizes that the show he put on can't go on forever. Yes, people are gonna say he lost his spunk. He lost his energy. And uh, he used to be so cool, and I used to worship that guy. And he's going to struggle with that. We're all kind of struggling between how other people 
see us and what other people think we are that we are not. We're all struggling with feeling misunderstood by the society that can't tell the difference between mask and reality. Yeah, your question, your choice has always been throughout all of this. Am I gonna keep trying to be something I'm not, even if it frustrates me, even if it annoys me, even if it's difficult, or am I gonna be myself? Am I gonna admit to myself the passions, the hidden shadow I cast, the insecurities, the vulnerabilities, the things I'm afraid of, that I dream of, that I need? Am I gonna try to hide from who I really am? Or am I gonna be myself? Am I gonna be in a mask, in a state of a kind of zombie mode, where we just walk forward li with life, not exploring our passion, not living life, not enjoying the moment, just breathing and breathing and hoping for the next day. Hoping for the day where we can finally merge and be just who we are. My name is Eric Thor and I approve of this message.